Hello everybody, this is Adam from Wheel Guns for Wheel Men. Today we're going to be discussing the TriStar Attack, A-T-A-C, semi-automatic 12-gauge shotgun made in Turkey. I've thrown a hollow sun red dot on it. Comes with a single muzzle brake slash choke tube, it's ported choke tube. I don't know if it technically counts as a muzzle brake, but it has porting. It's a muzzle device, so yeah, there you got it. Um, again, semi-auto, 12 gauge from Turkey. Now let's talk about this gun. Uh, I'm going to be posting at the same time as this video, either directly before or after, a video of me shooting both birdshot and buckshot out of it. Um, there's some issues when trying to chamber rounds, and we'll get to that. Um, but I'm going to start off with... The four pros before we go to the four cons uh, for the pros and cons so first pro is TriStar actually has decent customer service I had a different shotgun from them the firing pin broke on the first shot uh, sent it in three days later they got it back to me covered the cost of shipping everything was free and it was fixed they replaced the parts and it was good customer service so if you do get a lemon Rest assured, at least I had good experience, hopefully you do too. <laughs> Second pro, of course, is you can get these for as low as $200 on sale, and normally they're like $290 to like $320. Um, not bad at all, it's cheap for a semi-automatic anything. Uh, so a semi-auto 12 gauge for that amount that actually runs is good. You can get cheaper ones also from Turkey and China, but uh, no dubious on the ability to cycle you know, the next shell. Now. So, first two pros are, of course, good customer service, and it's $200, and it works. Now, the reason that it works reliably and ejects everything from, like, 9-shot birdshot, little recoil loads, um, all the way up to slugs easily, is because um, it has a fairly rudimentary design, but on the outside... Pro number three, it does not look like a rudimentary semi-automatic shotgun. Doesn't look like an 1187 or something kind of easy. It looks kind of like a Benelli M4, which I think that's a pro. Like people like cool looks, um, and the rubbery handle is actually you know pretty nice. Uh, has finger grooves, which some people like, some people don't, but you know, it has good texture, and it's it's actually not bad. Um, now the last pro is it comes with a Picatinny rail, so you can mount a red dot, which a lot of Turkish guns don't just come with that for some models. And so the pick rail, I think, is, uh, you know, the fourth pro. So it's cheap and reliable, good customer service. You got a pick rail, and <clears throat> um, and it, it looks cool. <laughs> now, there are, however, some cons. If you watched a video of me shooting it, you'll see that you can't really chamber around um, by throwing it into the open action and just hitting the bolt release button. Uh, that's that's a con. Um, you have to get it angled right. With my Remington 870 knockoff from Turkey, I can kind of shoot like a violin and throw a shell in and you know push the forearm forward and uh, you know work the pump and it will cycle it. This, no, it will jam up every time. It won't, it'll just nosedive or go up, um, won't feed into the chamber. So that's a, that's a con. Uh, and really I'm going to be looking at it as, that's not a, se a separate con. The first con will be just issues. It has issues. The first issue I had with it, and the reason this video took so long to get out, because uh, I've had this for months now, is I had to take it to a gunsmith because the button, the bolt release button, so when it's locked back like it is now, you have to hit a button to make the bolt slam forward. Now, that button, uh, when you depress it, you know, of course, there, it has a little arm that it makes move, and that arm is touching a different surface that's moving across. And it was just too much grit and roughness. And so I had to have a gunsmith polish it up and figure out what was wrong. And he polished up the surfaces and now it works. But before I had to literally pound on it 
and that is annoying to say the least. Now the second uh, thing of course was it doesn't really feed reliably um, from dropping the bolt. Now between shots it will cycle everything it just you know boom 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 never had a problem um, it's just that initial trying to chamber that first round um, on a reload that's kind of you know taking it from the a shell holder and throwing it in. Now if you load the mag tube and you know use the controls to put a round from the magazine into the carrier, cycle the bolt, bolt's really smooth, that will chamber just fine. It's just kind of in the heat of the moment if you're like in a combat scenario, that's when it gets a little dicey. Now the other thing, uh, quality control issue wise, is Turkish guns are made by people who apparently do not believe in Loctite. <laughs> Not just this gun, I also had the Gerson Regard have this problem. These screws on all these Turkish guns I get, none of them have been Loctited. They all jiggle loose within 50 rounds normally. Some of them jiggle loose within hundreds of rounds, but here, 25 rounds of 12 gauge, and the entire Picatinny rail section, which isn't part of the receiver, it's just screwed on, it came loose, had to torque it down and Loctite it. And then this, I'm trying has a pin right here that's just free free to move about. It's not screwed in or anything. It's just a little roll pin that you push through, and it's, you know goes in either side. But that hole right here does have a screw, and it keeps in that screw when you screw it in tightly keeps that roll pin from moving, you know, jiggling out, um, and your sight doesn't fall off, which is nice. And so that needed to be torqued down and locked headed as well. Um, so there are some issues, but nothing major. Again, if you load the mag tube, drop the first round into the carrier, rack the bolt, you're good to go. Or if you want to have the bolt already locked back after you've loaded it, um, and it locks back because you're done shooting, whatever, and you keep the gun tilted this way, you can drop a shell in and just punch it real fast. Uh, and I'll drop it. Also, not punch it if you don't want. It'd be a lot smoother to just throw the shell in and do that. Anyways, bolt smooth, as you can tell. Works easily. Uh, so, there are some minor issues. Nothing too bad, though. But there are three other cons. The first is, there's no way to mount a flashlight to this. There's no Picatinny rail right here. There's not really a good you know, secondary mag tube extension that you kind of like get those little adapters that kind of clamp into place and then you put a flashlight on them. It's not really good uh, if you want a flashlight. That's the second con. Um, it's also a dec decent amount of recoil compared to a, a actual Benelli M4 for instance or a higher end gun like the Remington Versamax even, or Savage Renegade. And that is because, again, it is cheap because the action is rudimentary. It does not have the fancy dual gas piston, whatever, that the Benelli M4 has. You know, it doesn't have that fancy mechanical design internally to make it soft shooting and kind of adapt to the round you're using to show. It's very basic. It just has two holes. <laughs> in the barrel that cycle back down into the, um, uh, don't know the term for it, but it cycles back down into the forearm basically and it has a little piece of metal that captures it and it pushes the part that holds the bolt um, and pushes it along the track and there's a buffer spring and then it goes back forward and it cycles. But it's way over gassed and that's why it's reliable even with weak loads. But that means when you're shooting buckshot and slugs, it really sucks to shoot. Um, but hey, it runs reliably because of that. And it's 200 and some dollars. Can't complain, right? The only other con, and this doesn't really matter to some people, is that because this is made in Turkey, not in America, there is a law, 18 U.S.C. 922 little r. And what that is, is a law that is supposed to prevent people from basically buying up parts kits of AKs and such from other, you know, countries in the Eastern Bloc, sending them to America and then adding American parts of different sorts and tricking them out. 
they didn't want people to do that. So what you can't do on foreign guns is have certain scary parts. So you can't have a fore grip and a folding stock and a pistol grip. And also, for shotguns, you can't have a magazine tube that holds more than five rounds. So even though you could get a magazine tube extension and make this hold seven or eight rounds probably, you can't legally do that. Not unless you go through and swap out a bunch of other parts, which do not try to do that with this gun. It's not worth it. Just if you have the time and money to do that, you're going to be buying something nicer than this. You're going to be buying a Benelli or a Beretta 1301 or something. So anyways, the fact that it's from Turkey, you have that 922R compliance issue. If you took the pistol grip off, you could add, I'm not sure if you can take the pistol grip off without taking the buttstock off too, but the point is, if you get a Turkish gun without a pistol grip, you can have a magazine tube extension making a hold of eight rounds or whatever. But because it comes with a pistol grip, you can't do that as long as the pistol grip is on it. So again, to summarize, the four cons are can add folding stock or magazine tube extension. No way to really add a flashlight. It has a lot of recoil and it just had a few issues and had to take it to a gunsmith and it's still, it's kind of hard to chamber that first round from a locked back bolt where you just throw around him. So, and you're gonna have to lock tight down your screws on your front side and fix any rail um, as soon as you get it. So minor issues, I think. Uh, so there are some cons. But for the price, I think it's a good value. But there might be other shotguns from Turkey in the same price range that are of a better value, and we will discuss that in the future. Please like and subscribe and stay tuned. I think next week I should be able to get a full review out of the three different 12-gauge Turkish shotguns that I acquired. Two pumps, one semi-auto, this being the semi-auto. It's going to be a comparison for the Turkish shotgun battle royale. And again, sorry it's taken so long, I just had to send one of them to the shop. Also, I've been pretty busy and I'm trying to get footage, you know, action footage um, of the different ones. And also just run a lot of rounds through them before I do a full review. Anyways, thanks again. Like and subscribe.